Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Swapno here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial about Adobe Illustrator CC 2017. Today we're going to be talking about the blend tool and a little bit of backbone manipulation. So by the end of this tutorial, we're hoping that uh, we can be able to make things like these. Pretty cool, right? So let's get started and kind of learn the ropes about this cool tool and see what it's all about. So first off, we're going to try to start off with a cool little abstract line shape. Um, when you've created your new project in Illustrator, uh, try to have the pen tool selected and stay on the left side of the project when you start off. Now, when you do, uh, go ahead and try to make a kind of abstract object. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and make a flower type of object and do something like this. That's my object number one. It looks a little funny because it's not done yet. And it looks kind of weird because it's just a weird X thing. But I think in the end, it'll look pretty cool. Now on the other side, on the right side, we're going to make another shape. Um, this shape can also be whatever you want. For me, I'm thinking about doing a kind of whistle ish looking thing. So let's go ahead and do something like that. That looks cool. Okay, now we're going to select both of these and then go over to the blend tool. The blend tool looks like a square with two circles overlap on top of it. It is on the left hand toolbar if you're in the standard viewing mode and the viewing window. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click that. Uh, if you double click it, it'll open up the actual editing options window. And in that, in the drop down bar, go ahead and select specified steps. Uh, for our purposes, I'm going to start off by lowering this down to three or even 10 would work. So let's go ahead and start with 10 and hit OK. Um, now the cursor should change to become a small square. We're going to take this small square and we're going to click on the starting point of the first object. So we're going to click right here. And then we're going to click on the starting point of the second object, so right here. And boom, it should create this shape. So as you can see, we've created a repetition of these objects as they form into each other over and over and over again as they eventually become each other. And we have 10 of these because in our blending menu, we chose 10. Now we can take this option, we can make it as much as we want. Should we choose to activate the preview option, we can make this 20 and actually see the visual effect of adding objects to it. Uh, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and select 260, just a number off the top of my head and make this. So that's pretty cool, right? And we've got this. This is the basics of the blend tool. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial that we're going to learn a little bit about backbone manipulation too. And don't worry, I won't leave you hanging. We're going to work on that a little bit too. So let's go ahead and create our third line. And we're going to create this in the top region of the project. And that's just because it's where we have open space. You can really do it anywhere, but we're going to start up at the top and we're going to make a kind of really long looking sine curve kind of thing and kind of go like this. That looks awesome. Okay. So that's what it's going to look like. And now we're going to highlight both objects again. This time, do not click the blend tool. This has something to do with the blend tool. Instead, we're going to go to object, hit blend in the actual menu, and then click replace spine. What this will do is it'll make the spine of the object actually become that new shape that we made. Now you can't do this through the actual tool. You do have to go to the actual options menu. Now for me, this is a little bit too big on this. So we're going to go ahead and transform and scale this down to about half the size. So let's just say 60%. And that makes it that big. I think that looks super cool. Um, if you guys make your shape and you want to rotate it, turn it around, invert it, whatever you want to do, you can go ahead and manipulate that. Just make sure that when you do, you've selected all three of the line segments, because if you just change one, it'll morph along with that. So if you change the first line segment, the first object that we made, it, everything else will morph instead of just making it bigger or smaller. So make sure that you've changed all three parts in the same accordance. Okay, now we're going to kind of get started with doing things like coloring and making a cool effect on it. So over here on the right side, you have all these options and we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to see these two stacked squares. That is the layers option. If you guys use things like Photoshop, you guys should be familiar with what layers are. Um, and they're really useful because you can lock layers and edit them one at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lock this layer by, and it'll create a small lock logo right there. Then we're going to create the new layer logo down here. 
And once we click that, it'll make a new layer. We're gonna drag that one below this one. And we're gonna go over here to the square drawing tool. And we're gonna make a rectangle that goes across the entire screen. Once we've done that, it'll make a white rectangle. And we're gonna go ahead and try to change the color of the rectangle. Um, you can make it any color you want. Of course, it's all about what you wanna do. Uh, for me personally, I'm gonna make it into a dark red, kind of like a blood red, like so. Now, this in itself looks super cool. If you're happy with the way this looks, you don't have to worry about anything else. You don't have to worry about changing any of the other colors. Um, I'm gonna try to edit the colors individually of the actual object that we've made. So we're gonna go ahead and lock the background now and unlock layer one, which creates contains our shape. Now we're gonna go to our shape and as you can see, the whole thing is in black. And we can go ahead and edit the actual shape before we go on with colors by going to the direct selection tool and we can click on individual components like the spine or the starting and finishing shape and we can actually edit that around. So if we wanna pull this over a little bit and make some small edits or if we wanna take this point right here and move it up and make more openings right there, whatever we wanna do, it's kind of like our playing ground. So whatever you guys feel like you're comfortable with um, for having on your project, you're totally okay with doing that. And don't worry about messing it up because at this point, if it looks like this, it should be fine. Um, you shouldn't have to worry too much about messing things up by manipulating it. Just don't do anything too drastic. Otherwise you'll change the way your project looks. And if you're set up on a look and you change it too much, you might not end up liking it the same way. So make sure that you edit the spine and the starting and ending points as you see fit. Uh, personally, I'm happy with this kind of flowy look to it and I'm happy with the starting and ending points as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring it. So for coloring it, we're gonna make sure that we edit the actual strokes and not the shape. If you select this whole thing and you go to the color window, and you select, let's just say, blue, it does that. And that is not as pretty. If you're going for that kind of a look, that's still super cool if you want that kind of a shape. But me personally, I still wanna see gaps between, between those lines. So we're gonna go ahead and control Z, go back to this, and we're gonna edit the actual individual strokes. So to start off, we're gonna click on the first actual object, and we're gonna take that into isolation mode and select just this one. And in the top of the editing plane, there is a option for editing the actual color that it contains and the color of the stroke. We're gonna edit the color of the stroke. So do not edit this one, edit the one on the right, and you can change the stroke to whatever color you'd like. For me personally, I'm gonna make the one on the left side a blue, like so. And as you can see, it becomes from blue to black, and it follows because the last shape is actually black. And we can take the black, and we can turn it into any color we want. For me personally, I'm gonna turn it into a gradient from orange to yellow, like so. So in the end, this is what we have. And you can do things like you can change the stroke, you can change how thick you want the lines to be. So I can take this stroke and I can make it three, I can make it whatever I'd like. So I'm gonna personally, I'm gonna set it back to one and you can make it however big you want and manipulate whatever those things that you want to do. Uh, overall, I think this is a pretty cool technique and offers a pretty cool way of doing things. Um, of course, you can still go back and edit the background if you want to make this darker and make it more contrasting to the new object that you made that totally works too. And you can really do whatever you want with this. Uh, overall, I hope this tutorial helped you guys kind of make these kind of abstract pieces. Um, I know you guys have been asking to see more of how I actually make these things. So this is an example of one of the things that I'm able to make. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. If you guys are interested in seeing more tutorials, be sure to subscribe and comment anything that you want to see. I'd be happy to do any kinds of tutorials with Premiere Pro, After Effects, Illustrator, Photoshop, anything you guys want to see. So be sure to let me know if you guys want to see anything else and I'll be happy to make them for you. If you guys have any tech that you want me to check out, be sure to leave it in the comments as well, and I will take a look. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, be sure to subscribe and like, slay it on social media to stay up to date on the latest tech. I'll see you guys next time.